Right, let's take a look at some of the day's other news now. And Russian President Vladimir Putin has made a rare overseas trip. He's in the United Arab Emirates for the first leg of a trip that includes talks with regional leaders. He's expected to visit Saudi Arabia later on Wednesday and host Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi back in Moscow on Thursday. Putin's been bolstering his partnerships with Gulf nations as Russia faces growing isolation uh, by the West. Well, I'm joined now by... Uh, Al Jazeera's diplomatic editor, James Bays, who's with me on set. James, well, you can tell us more about the visit, but it's, it's one of the few places he can go to, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, remember, there's that arrest warrant for, um, for transferring Ukrainian children from the International Criminal Court, and so there are many places that the Russian president wouldn't feel safe to visit. He didn't feel safe to visit uh, South Africa last year when he was going to go for the BRICS summit, but these two countries he's visiting, UAE and Saudi Arabia, are not signatories to the Rome Statute, and so the, this is a place that he can go, and he seems to be pretty delighted that he's on the ground in Abu Dhabi. Some of his statements talking about um, the um, unprecedented high level of relations between the UAE and Russia right now, saying that the UAE is the main trading partner uh, for Russia uh, in the Arab world. Well, remember, UAE is also a pretty close partner with the US, so I'm not sure how this will be seen in Washington, because clearly they would like other nations to be imposing sanctions on Russia, and yet there's a record number of tourists and a record amount of trade uh, going on between Russia and UAE. And he's then going on to meet Iran's Ibrahim Raisi, not in Tehran, though, in Moscow. First, a trip to Saudi Arabia, um, which is important, because I think the other part of this is OPEC and OPEC+. Plus, and oil and Saudi and Russia have been working very, very... Uh, closely together, where some other members of the OPEC plus grouping um, do not have the same view, but they've been trying to restrict the oil supply to keep the price high. It's certainly something that Russia wants and Saudi Arabia uh, wants at this stage. But yes, you're right, then he goes um, from Riyadh back to Moscow uh, to see uh, the Iranian president, which is somewhat odd because he could have just flown to Tehran. They've obviously decided he didn't want to go for t to Tehran for some reason or other, but important uh, discussions there mm. um, because, as you know, Western nations accuse Iran of um, directly supplying missiles and weapons to Russia for its war uh, in Ukraine. And, of course, also important given Iran's position uh, with, the, with the war on Gaza, which will be, I think, an important subject of discussions in Abu Dhabi, in Riyadh, and then in Moscow when he meets the Iranian president. And to, to what extent, James, is this an effort uh, on the part, part of the Russians to sort of reconstitute their foreign policy, their diplomacy in the Middle East, and be part of what happens next here? Oh, I think, I think it's definitely the uh, president of Russia trying to prove that he is an international player. And um, you could only look at the war on Gaza, uh, despite the devastation for the people of Gaza and the bombardment in Gaza, uh, uh, as a good thing for Russia in terms of rehabilitation diplomatically. Um, they can talk about that war. They can talk about the US, what they say is double standards uh, by the US. And they have long-standing role uh, in the Middle East. They're not the main player, but they're part of that group, the quartet, that everyone forgot about. Um, and so Russia says it wants to play a role and a much bigger role internationally. James Bays, diplomatic editor, thank you so much.